Fan Sports, the sports show that is dedicated to the Seattle sports fans. My name is Dave. This is Kevin. How are you doing today, Kevin? I'm doing great. We're going to be talking about the Mariners. How else could I not be great? Man, did they have a little rebound? I, I know that last week we talked. It's a little rough. You got a little down on me. Did, did we have a bounce back week? I don't know. We had some somewhere like six wins, one loss. The six last wins. Week. What? I'll take that, Kevin. I'll take it too. Man. I, I don't think we're the lasting batting averages anymore, Kevin. No, we are second to last. So who's who is first now, or who is the worst in batting average? The Milwaukee Brewers. Yes. You know what, Kevin? If they disregard any of their players, we should take them. <laughs> we did. Oh well, well look at that. Uh, we look took that. A, we took Jake Hager off of waivers from the Brewers this week and moved Evan White from the 10 day to the 68 disabled list. Well, and, we're gonna dive, we're gonna today, dive into we, all that stuff. We we actually recalled Donovan Walton from Oh yeah, uh, I like that kid. Yep, I he, like he's, kid. he's back in the big leagues. Back in the big leagues, got another cup of coffee, does he? Yep. All right. Before we get into all that, what we'd like you guys to do is if you hear something that you find exciting, if you find something that you thought we unearthed a, a nugget for you, yeah, I know, right? Unearthed a nugget. So if we, we made you smile, man, you guys give us a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button. Uh, we would love to be able to, to bring you content every week. We're not going where, anywhere. We're going to continue to put out uh, content. Uh, if you look behind me right now, I've got some construction going on in a new studio. So we're going to be able to, uh, you know, make our show even better. Okay. With that in mind. So, Kevin, you told us that, that we were 6-1 and one last week. Um, we swept the Rays. And I have a question for you, Kevin. Before we – a question I have for you is, should we look at the sweep of the Rays as the start of something big – or not get too ahead of ourselves and be set up for a letdown. Kevin, tell me your feelings on how important this four-game uh, sweep of the American League champion, Tampa Bay Devil Rays, was. It was huge. Not only was the sweep huge, we took two out of three from Minnesota, which is – Minnesota. Uh, Minnes and, you know, they're, the, they're leading the MLB in home runs. They are a well-hitting machine. Now, so to be able to come out the week like that, unfortunately, I am a lifelong Mariners fan. I have been excited so many times saying, this is it, this is it, and then to be let down. Kevin, yeah, that's, like, that's like seeing a bunch of Christmas presents under the tree and unwrapping them and going, a sweater? Really, Mom? <laughs> a sweater? that's kind of what we're seeing we're seeing some pretty packaging right now yep. you know in in the, in the dog days of summer but will that carry through because we're not getting contributions from the guys that we thought we were going to have contribution there's no kelnicks there's no kyle lewis there's no evan white uh, guys that we were banking on you know i mean we're getting contributions from mitch hanniger and and we're getting contributions from shed long which who shed long was not at, you know, at the beginning of the season. We're like, well, if he could play well, that'd be a bonus. Right. Yeah. You know, and go ahead. Talk to me, Kev. Tell me. Well, let's talk about the series real quick with Tampa Bay. We had three count them three walk off wins. The first one was Thursday. Kyle Seeger singled in Jake Powers. You want to know, hold on before you go on with that one. He wasn't even supposed to play. That was a pinch hit single. It was. Sorry, I don't mean to jump all over your No, you're brain. good. And Jake Bowers wasn't even on our team when the season started. I mean, he's playing very well. Then we had Saturday, Mitch Hanniger singled in J.P. Crawford. And talk about J.P. Crawford, he had a grand salami that game. I mean, that guy is on fire. Did he, did he break out the rye bread and the mustard, Kevin? He did. You know it, man. Okay. It, and then Sunday, Shed Long Jr. I, I feel some more grand salamis. Grand Slam walk up. Wow. What I was talking to my daughter watching the game on my phone, and I'm like jumped up and down out of my chair, and my daughter's looking at me like I'm crazy. She's like, Happy Father's Day. That's all we have to say, Kevin. Thanks. But you're welcome. <laughs> I was just YouTube. 
I was laughing because she's like, it's got to be Mariners, right? And I said, yeah, we just won with the walk-off Grand Slam. And she goes, what's that? So she knows what a Grand Slam is. She didn't know what a walk-off Grand Slam is. So. This is the daughter that hadn't seen Die Hard. So I would really take <laughs> all of what she has to say with a grain of salt. Anyway, go ahead, Kevin. Tell us more about the series. So anyway, I just wanted to talk about that. I mean, it, it, was, it was so much fun to watch. And we finally get to be excited. I really think the batting is starting to turn around and they are building confidence. I know Kyle Seager is struggling. You know, most of the guys are still batting in the low twos, but it is turning around. I really believe that if our pitching can stay consistent, like it has been, or, or getting there, I think that the bats are going to turn around. And if we could bat 250, man, I think we could win this year. We could, we could win. Are you saying that we're going to the – that we have a shot at, at the playoffs, Kevin? We always have a chance. Well, so you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> I'm saying there's a chance, yes. Saying – okay. All right, Kevin. So how are the pitching? How was our pitching at – how they hold up last year oh, or last week? <laughs> our, our pitching did very well. I didn't have the stats from all the pitching, but I do have a team stats as far as pitching goes. We're 20th in ERA at 4.46 ERA, uh, number 14 in saves. We have 18 saves, which is good for our bullpen. Uh, we're tied for 22nd in strikeouts with 597. We're tied number 16 in home runs allowed, 84. And mm. we're tied, or we're at 15th in base off balls with 236. So overall, I mean, we're pretty much in the middle of the pack to you know just under the middle of the pack on pretty much everything so i can't complain about our pitching or i mean logan gilbert yk i mean those guys looked unbelievable last week Uh, flexing steady flexing i mean he just flexing baby he just the three of those guys were on they were great last week now if we can get the, the you know a few other pitchers to I, I think even Justin had a bounce back game didn't he I mean somewhat uh, yeah somewhat no I, yeah I, I don't remember I'm sorry I'm drawing a blank so that's okay hey I, I mean so I mean we had to have contributions from all of our I know that Justin Dunn only played or only pitched two innings didn't he and then he yeah. was, came out with shoulder tightness yeah we were still able to bring in long relief and make that happen yeah. so yeah, I, I was encouraged by everything that we had as far as our, our bullpen and our starting pitching last week. Yep. Before we start taking a trip around the uh, the minors, though, Kevin, I kind of want to bounce back to last week. We, we threw out the question, who was the worst closer in Seattle Mariner history? And I tell you what, Kevin, kind of, I kind of got some a, a lot of answers that uh, people that I completely even forgot about. Of course, Ayala is yeah. – it was – head and shoulders above everybody else the bobby aiella you know uh schooler was another guy that was brought up oh uh, steve chisek yeah. jose mesa oh yeah was thrown in there man i tell you what uh, and that when, we, back when and- we got steve i yeah. was so excited because he was lights out for other clubs but he came to seattle and just like Okay, there, there's a couple other in here, others in here that made me kind of walk me down memory lane. How about Heathcliff Slocum? Slocum, yeah. Slocum if you him. got him. But, yeah, no, <laughs> that, that was another one. Charlie Furbush. But, again, Bobby Ayella was – he was the winner of our poll. Thanks to all of you guys that, that answered that question. You know, that was a lot of fun to get some of the worst – I think maybe next time, next week, we'll do a little dive into the worst acquisition that we've made. I think there's a little third base, third baseman that we can throw out there that everybody will kind of dive all over. But there's been some bad acquisitions that we've had yes. as far as free agents. Anyway, Kevin, how you have you got your your uh, car gassed up? Have you got your seatbelt fastened? Shall we take a trip around the miners? I do. Let's start with the rain ears. The rain ears got to crack me a cold one, Kevin. Yep, they were se- they're second in the division, uh, twenty two wins, seventeen losses. Last gotcha. week they had four wins 
and two losses. Cal Raleigh is still tearing it up. He's lighting it on. I uh, yeah. actually heard Jerry Depoto this week say that it's not going to be much longer before he's well, up at the big league club. How can it when he's batting 353? 353? 353. That's a good engine, too. Yeah. And <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, Jose Marmaleos. Marmaleos. He's okay. batting 342 now. Wow. He's about okay. ready to make come back to the big boys. And Dylan Thomas, the outfielder that I, I really kind of like, that's a, I feel sorry for her because nobody talks about him, but he's batting 308. 308, outstanding. Yeah. And that's the excitement going on in Tacoma. Is that, there's nothing about a, a little feller named Jared? No Kelnick news? Me, well, I mean, there are some news, but – because I know that he's gone bought, he's gone yard a few times. Yeah, he's just, you know, his batting average is not that exciting down there yet. He's hit five in the last seven games. However, he's still under the Mendoza line. So. Okay, so all right. So that wraps up any everything. We got uh, any pitchers that are jumping out at you, Kevin? Not in triple A, no. Not in triple A. All right. So let's jump in the car, head to the south and to the east a little bit, to Arkansas, where everybody's brother is also their brother. So. Don't, don't even go there. Okay, sorry. The Travelers had five wins and one loss last week. Woo! They, That's uh, great news. Moved back up to third place. Okay, uh, out of the cellar? Well, no, they're in fourth. They're at 21 wins, 20 losses now. So All they're right. about 500. About 500. We'll take it. Our boy Brian O'Keefe, the catcher. Man. He is not only batting 310, he leads the team in hits with 40, mm -hmm. batting average at 310, and RBI is at 27. So Brian O'Keefe, he is hats off. Uh, Maybe when Cal moves up, Brian's going to go to AAA. We don't know. We don't know. A gentleman by the name of Pin Murti, who is a pitcher. Okay. Was the pitcher of the week. He threw a complete game shutout, nine inning shutout, wow. allowed three hits, two walks on 109 pitches. So Very hats nice. off to Penn. Okay. And he's not in the pin. He's a no, starter. He isn't. Um, let's talk about Ian McKinney. He's the okay. pitcher that we've been talking about every week since right? we started. He's still got a 218 ERA. Three wins, zero losses. He's ranked the third best pitcher in the league. Okay. He's at 50 strikeouts. Five zero strikeouts. Wow, it's almost half a, half a half a hundred there, Kevin. With 15 walks. Very That's nice. Pretty good record. Yeah, it is. And our friend Tyler Herb, sad news on the Travelers front. Uh oh. He went on the IL this week. Well, he's at least it's a seven-day IL down there, so right. we won't know until next week how's everything going. But he went well, on. Well, next week when he comes back to the club, he'll be uh, reunited with us. Ho hopefully, hopefully, and it feels so good. <laughs> All right, so let's move hey, Kevin, to Everett. So we take that trip back up to the Pacific Northwest and tell us what's going on with the Aqua Sox. Well, the Aqua Sox, they had three wins, three losses. They're back to second in their division with 24 wins, 16 losses. Gotcha. And this is what I find interesting. Uh-oh. There are six Everett Aqua Sox players, six, in the top 10 in batting average. Okay, top 10 in the PCL or top 10 in all of the minors? In, in, in the – in the Everett Aqua Sox division, the PCL. In the PCL. Okay, yeah. Pacific Coast League. Okay. Yep. All right. Julio Rodriguez, 325 batting average. He's leading the entire league. Patrick Frick, the shortstop. Oh, Frick. He's batting 317. He's second in the league. Gotcha. Jack Larson, the outfielder that we've talked about quite a few times. Absolutely. He's batting 303. And he's fourth in the league. Gotcha. So in the top five, we have three in the top five. Wow. 
Zach Deloche, the first time we talked about last year's draft pick. He's an outfielder. He's batting 296. He's fifth in the league. And now he was our first first rounder come right? No, he, he was uh, I think in the he was our first outfielder that we drafted. Gotcha. I think he was in the second round. Anyway, Carter Bins, our catcher, mm. uh, he dropped down to 291, but he's sixth in the league. Okay. And Austin Shinton, the infielder slash third baseman that we kind of talked about being the player of the week last week. That's he's, right. Make sure there's an N in there. Yep. He's batting 280, 281, and he's 10th in the league. Wow. Those are your six batters with the Everett Aqua wow. Sox. Okay. Game. Kevin, let's head down to uh, D's. Going down to California. That's right. The Nuts had two wins, four losses. Mm -hmm. They're third in their division with 23 wins, 19 losses. Not, not a lot of great news coming out of the, down in the, that area. Um, Cade Marlowe, uh, left fielder, he's batting 301. And Novell Marte, when under the 300 mark, he's batting 299. Wow, so that, that's still that's pretty good. The only two news out of that area. That, out so. of Modesto. All right, Kevin. And well, that, we've, take, we've taken a spin around the, the minors. We've discussed the worst closer or, or bullpen in, in history. And, uh, and we've also talked about the big league club. And, and guys, please leave us, keep leaving us those comments. Keep, tell, keep telling us what uh, – all of what you guys want to hear and what you don't want to hear, give us thumbs up, subscribe. I'm Dave. This is Kevin. Oh, we have that. Oh my gosh. I have you I almost forgot the question. question again. Right. Extenders or are we traders, Kevin? Well, I don't really like what uh, Jerry DePoto had to say. Okay. Uh, he is opening open to listen to all offers mm -hmm. on our best player he called them yeah. because he thinks that we can get a pretty good haul back and so he's open now he doesn't necessarily want to trade him but he's open to listen to all offers i also think that uh, mitch is not running towards us wanting to be extended by us either well i mean why if you're mitch why would you i mean you got kelnick Lewis, Julio, he's kind of the odd man out right at this point that we've yeah. talked about it. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I think we're – I want to extend them if we can. Mm -hmm. It's not up to me. Well, I, I heard something this week about the New York Mets because they've got some historic pitching from DeGrom going on right now. And the thing that could hold them back is some hitting. And, you know, we seem to, we seem to come out pretty good when we trade with the, with the Mets. So far. Yeah. Well, you know, tell Nick's still in the, you know, Tacoma, but well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that trade is going to come down to one of the best trades we've ever done besides maybe the Padres trade last year. That was an unbelievable thing. Right. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, I, I still am an extender if we can. It's up to Mitch. And at this point, I think Mitch is looking at the, the writing on the wall, thinking, where am I going to play? Mm -hmm. um, I want to go play every day. So, right. And, and Taylor Trammell is another, you know, another name that, that kind of edges him out you know, as far as the youth goes. Yeah. And then, I mean, we talked about um, Dylan Thomas. Right. Another guy in Tacoma. I mean, we, it down, I mean, down in Everett, Julio Rodriguez, Jack Larson, Zach Deloche, they're all outfielders. Um, we got a plethora of outfielders. Yeah. Not only in, in our, you know, coming right up, but in our farm system. So, and, yeah. And I honestly, Kevin, I don't know if he's our best player anymore. Uh, hands down right now, he is our best player. I don't know. I don't well, know. <laughs> it's hard to I argue think with J.P. Crawford right I now. I think J.P. Crawford right now is trying to take that mantle and run with it. 
Yeah, and I think Ty France is also going to be in that category as well. You know, once he gets healthy again, I don't think he's 100% right now. And Jake uh, Fraley. Oh, I mean, we forgot about Jake Fraley. I mean, how could we fear, fear the, the beard? beard. The fear of the beard, yeah. So I don't know. It, it looks like at this point, hearing the conversation I I heard, listened to, that it could be uh, bye bye Hanniger, and that makes me cry. Well, it won't make you cry if he brings back something exciting. No, and you know what, Kevin? I'll be sad. I'll be sad. We're gonna bring something exciting next week on next- Mariner Weekly. My name is Dave. This is Kevin. Subscribe down below. Peace.